Hi, I'm Dewey Hollister, the Executive Director of the Botanical Garden of the Virgin Islands, the St. George Village Botanical Garden. And today, I would like to wish everybody Happy Arbor Day. And speaking of trees, I'm going to talk about one of our favorite trees in the garden today, which is this beautiful African baobab behind me. You can see that it is an enormous tree. I thought we'd walk a little closer to it so you could see some of the features of the tree. But before I do, I'm going to surprise you in saying this tree was a seedling in 2006 and it is now an enormous tree. Part of that reason is it found a broken water pipe so it grew extra fast. And in between, it actually was blown over a hurricane and put back up again. So it's had quite a life story so far. If you hear meow, it's our garden cat, mama cat, and she always goes around with us. Come on, honey, let's go see the tree. Come on, honey. So now I'm standing at the base of the tree and I think you can see how big it is. Baobab trees get much larger than this. They're native to continental Africa. They have been carbon dated as being at least as old as 3,000 years old. They are sacred to many uh, traditional groups in Africa. And here in the Caribbean, they were all brought in after the Europeans had discovered the Caribbean. The reason the trees actually were transported here to the Caribbean is not a beautiful story. Uh, unfortunately, it has to do with slavery. Slave ships bringing enslaved people to the Caribbean would use the fruit of this tree as provisions. Two reasons. The fruit lasts virtually forever. It's a hard shelled fruit with a powder in the inside that lasts a long time. You can mix that powder into drink or actually eat the powder. But they also knew that the enslaved Africans were familiar with the fruit and that they would in fact eat it on the voyage. So at any rate, when they arrived here in the Caribbean, the enslaved Africans would plant the seeds of the trees. Here on St. Croix, a unique thing happened. Besides the trees being associated with slave quarters, they became associated with plantations because the plantation owners took a light to them on this island. They became planted everywhere at major intersections, squares, other places. Uh, this tree was a pet. Uh, one of our wonderful garden members had grown it for many years in a pot and then donated it when we did our new visitor center. I'd like to show you the flower of the baobab. So if you look up above me, you'll see some of the white flowers up in the tree. They open for one day only, and actually one night only. They're, over, uh, they're a nocturnal flower. They are pollinated by bats. And once the flower falls, the fruit begins to form. Four to six months later, we're going to have lots of big furry balls attached to long stems, which here in the Caribbean gives rise to the name the dead rat tree because it looks like dead rats hanging by their tails. Baobabs, like all trees, obviously need a certain amount of water. They need a look at the sun. So every tree has similar characteristics. Hi, now here we are on the back side of the baobab tree. I brought you back here because I want to show you a close up of that beautiful flower you saw before. So here it is. You can see relative to my hand how large this flower is. These flowers are pollinated by bats, but they stay open for a few hours in the morning, as we are here in the morning right now, to catch other pollinators just in case, some bees, etc. But for the most part, it's a bat pollinated uh, flower. Here in the Caribbean, that's the Jamaican fruit bat that's primarily doing that job. We certainly do get fruit. And here you can see some stages here. So once the flower has finished for the night, it turns brown, like you see here. This part here, will actually fall off, revealing the fruit underneath that's going to form. So this is the baby fruit. When that gets to be full size, that fruit will be about this large and covered in fur and hanging from that stem. And over here, you can see a flower bud that in a few days will swell up and open up into another flower. So you can kind of see all stages of it. Well, I really, really am excited that you were here to join me for Arbor Day. And I'd love for you to think about planting trees. And we will see you the next time here in the Botanical Garden.